Is this the Bali Island? No, this is Italy. So if you have been in Rome and you didn't pop into this place, don't worry, I'll show you what you've missed. This place is called the Park of the Monsters or Sacro Bosco. It is located in Bomarzo, Italy. So what does it mean, it's Park of Monsters? It is a 16th century garden filled with bizarre sculptures and structures created by Prince Pier Francesco Orsini in memory of his wife, Giulia Farnese. Pier Francesco Orsini, also known as Vicino Orsini, was an Italian born in 1523 in Rome. He was known as a patron of the arts and the Duke of Bomarzo. There is weird story behind his wife Giulia because some sources claim she was 49 years older than him and dead before Pier was even born. Other sources claim they met after her recorded death which would mean the records today don't show actual facts about her. Both sources claim however that she was related to Pope Paul III. Also allegedly her daughter was not Piers but Pope Alexander. Pier's life was marked by personal tragedy, including his capture during the Italian wars where he was kept prisoner for some years, and then death of his wife, which affected him a lot and led him to embrace Epicureanism and create the garden as a villa of wonders. Epicureanism is a philosophical system founded by Epicurus around 307 BCE. It emphasizes the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain as the primary goals of life, but it defines pleasure as a state of tranquility and freedom from bodily pain. Epicureans advocate for a simple life, focusing on modest and sustainable pleasures, and avoiding excesses that lead to suffering. The parks blends classical and surreal elements, creating a unique visitor experience that invites exploration and contemplation of its hidden meanings and symbolism. The park was designed during a time when alchemy, astrology, and magic were banned but still fascinated many intellectuals, including Orsini himself. You could tell it was sort of theme park at the time. The sculptures are accompanied by cryptic inscriptions that offer philosophical and literary references, inviting visitors to ponder their meanings. The Park of the Monsters features several bizarre and striking statues, including the ogre, a large stone face with an open mouth, often referred to as the mouth of hell, a massive stone face with an open mouth, inviting visitors inside for a surreal experience. The sculpture is designed to create an echoing effect inside, contributing to a unique auditory experience. This is not just a sculpture, it looks like carved in the stone or cave. The park completion allegedly took 30 years. Another interesting sculpture is Hannibal's elephant, depicting an elephant trampling a Roman soldier, symbolizing the brutality of war. This sculpture is believed to symbolize the historical events. Hannibal is best known for his audacious crossing of the Alps with a diverse army, including war elephants, to invade Italy. Hannibal achieved several significant victories against Rome. Proteus and Glaucus, represented by a large fish head, these water deities add to the park's mythological theme. The Leaning House, a disorienting structure built on an incline that challenges visitors' balance, deliberately slanted structure built on a sloping rock. It can be entered through a small bridge, creating a disorienting experience for visitors. A dramatic scene featuring two giants engaged in combat, known as fighting giants. This sculpture, about 26 feet high, shows Hercules tearing apart another giant. During this period, many people believed in ghosts and spirits, which influenced daily life and cultural narratives. Ghosts were often seen as omens or manifestations of divine will, reflecting the era's blend of religious and supernatural beliefs. Superstitions about spirits were intertwined with the fear of black magic, as people believed that evil spirits could be summoned to fulfill personal desires. These beliefs were not isolated to the elite. They permeated all levels of society, contributing to a rich tapestry of ghost stories that reflected communal fears and moral lessons. People also were familiar with giants and stories about them. Giants were a popular subject in Renaissance folklore and literature. For example, Ferdinand Magellan's travels mentioned encounters with giants in Patagonia, which were descriptions of the indigenous people who were taller than the average European at the time. Additionally, large bones found in Europe fueled speculation about the existence of giant humans. The age of exploration fueled tales of fantastical creatures, as explorers returned with stories of strange beings from distant lands. Mapmakers illustrated these creatures, such as crocons and sea monks, on maps, reflecting the era's blend of myth and discovery. Hence the Park of Monsters was at the time culturally aligned with discoveries.
legends and stories. But I want to take a second and analyze some old photos of the park. On these photos looks like all sculptures are gathered together and today they seem more scattered. The position of the ogre is different. Today it is located on top of the hill with stairs leading to it instead. The elephant sculpture seen from another angle shows damage to significant part of its body. Looks like cladding missing, which makes you wonder what was it made of in 16th century. The park was neglected over the years later, rediscovered and rearranged for tourism. It's fascinating place for sure that has over time turned into tourist attraction. What do you guys think?